Hello beautiful and welcome to my video. Obviously I'm not Angie. Um, she was just kind enough to let me use her background for my green screen backdrop, but I get into that at the end of the video. Today I'm going to be showing you three looks using the Club Nebula palette. Um, I think when this video is live, that will be the day of the second restock. Kleidos and Angie said that they don't know if they're going to be able to restock uh, this palette again. Um, so if you're interested in what that's going to look like, continue watching the video. I'll leave links and everything down in the description as far as um, where to buy the palette, how to get to Angie's videos, um, all that good stuff. Uh, so sit tight and let's get right into the first look. Okay, now I have you all zoomed in. We're gonna go ahead and start our first look. I already went ahead and laid down my eye primer. I did use the Kleidos Eye Activated or Tone Activated Eye Primer. Um, I've been using it since the Futurism palettes um, and I really liked it with those palettes, so I'm sure it will definitely work well with the Club Nebula palette. Any eye primer will do. I just like this one particularly with my Kleidos primers because I know that it's going to hold my more uh, shimmer shades in place all day. Now in Angie's video where she does her three looks, she did a, um, a horizontal halo eye. I'm not going to be doing the halo eye today. I am going to be taking inspiration from another look that she did. Um, but I will be using the same colors as her halo eye. Um, and it's just going to be a very basic look. Uh, so if you're not as comfortable playing with color or playing with the blue shades, um, hopefully this will give you the inspiration to go ahead and play with them. So I'm going to go ahead and take a... It's already kind of blue. I'm going to go ahead and take a more flatter brush because when I shape, I'm not as advanced in eyeshadow as Angie. So I, when I place my shadow in, I like to kind of have something that will help me press into my shape and then I go in with a blender brush, but you'll see the process. So I'm going to go ahead and start with that 7 of 9 shade and I'm just going to press it in right here in my more outer crease area and just kind of define the shape that I'm going for. You really don't have to go in in the eyeshadow palette. Um, I'm just slightly tapping in just to get a little bit of color. And it's already covering my brush pretty well. You really don't need a whole lot. Um, just another note that I want to add that I learned from Angie. Uh, when you place your toner down, before you go in with your look, give it a minute and kind of let it start to settle in and then go ahead and press it in um, when you start to see those lines. That way it'll kind of really prevent any creasing and you'll get more out of your product. And a little really goes a long way. You don't want to slap on too much because as you're dragging your brush around on your lid, you don't want to be um, picking up that primer. And this shade is so lovely and easy to place. It's not hard to move around. It's really easy to work in. Wow, I don't think I've ever done a cleaner look before. This is really nice. So we're gonna go ahead and start the other eye, and again, we're just gonna be kind of carving out that shape that we want. I 
I tend to feel that one eye always comes out a lot better than the other when laying down my shadow. So hopefully both my eyes will look the same by the end of this look. And I'm noticing with these mats, if you just press them in, you really get more color payoff. They're very soft. If you're a beginner eyeshadow user, these are very user friendly. You just don't want to go in too heavy because once you place it down, it's down. That's where it's going to be. And now I just really want to stamp in that color just to make sure my crease is covered. This 7 of 9 shade is... I don't quite have a blue like this in my collection. I don't really have too many blues in my collection. But this is a really nice one. I feel like it's complementing my skin tone. Um, I always was kind of afraid of blues because I don't really, no one really has like a blue base um, or a blue undertone. So if you blend too much, it tends to look like you have a big old black eye. Um, wow. Let's just fluff that out a little bit, give it the same. I hope those are going both in the same direction. Perfect. Okay, and then what is the next shade I'm gonna take in? Um, let's go in with that deeper blue void shade. I think in Angie's video, she said to go in a little with a light hand. Um, you really don't have to press into that. It's so pigmented, you don't really have to press too hard in that pan. And I'm just going to kind of stamp this in the outer corner and sweep it across. Oh, wow. I mean, you see it in Angie's video, but these, seeing it in real life is so nice. These blues really play well together. Press them in. It's really nice. I'm so quiet because I'm so carefully trying to <laughs> place this blue down. But I really like how this void deepens the shade. But that 7 of 9 really softens the edges. Did I go higher on one side? No. Oh, maybe that's just my face. Uh, I think they're going the same way. Perfect. Um, I'm going to go back in with that brush I was using for 7 of 9 and just kind of go back and forth and blend the outside to soften it up. These are really nice. Like, I wouldn't... I don't feel uncomfortable about going back and forth between these two just to kind of really blend them out and soften them up. This formula is so user-friendly, just so user-friendly. So 
anyone from beginner to advanced, I think would really enjoy just the Kaleidos formula in general. If you're not into uh, the shades of the Nebula palette, their escapism, their escapism pod, is that what it's called? Or um, it's the big green and purple one. She doesn't use the Astro shade in her look, but I'm gonna go ahead and try it. Um, I'm gonna wet my brush and you don't have to use any kind of crazy spray. I'm just using uh, NYX Bear with me to just kind of wet my brushes. And this is the shade Astro and I'm just placing it in, tapping it in. Oh wow. This is so pretty. I'm kind of glad Angie didn't use this shade in her video because this is like a pleasant surprise. And I'm tapping in just to kind of cover over that corner area. Oh my goodness. Oh wow, and the way, I don't know if you can see it in this lighting, but the way that the light catches it when it's overlapped is so pretty. Oh Angie, these are so nice. And then I'm just gonna go and take that blue brush that I was using and just kind of soften that line where they meet. Wow. Oh. This is so pretty. All right, let me go ahead and pop Astro on the other side. Wow. Okay, for my lower lash, I think what I'm gonna do is Take some of that void and just press it in. Gotta make sure you connect to that corner. I am noticing a little bit of that astro fallout right here and a little bit right here. Now that I have the void laid down, I'm gonna go ahead and blend in seven of nine. Wow, the drama. Um, and then let's go ahead. I wanna get my hands on that Nova color for the inner corner. And Nova is supposed to be this beautiful, uh, I don't know if it's a multi-chrome or a duochrome. And I'm just gonna lay that on my inner corner. Oh, this is really I'm noticing that this Nova color because I'm catching my highlight and my inner corner at the same time, they complement each other really well. I wouldn't say they're necessarily the same shade. Because Nova is starting to kind of look, as I'm turning my head in the light, it'll look blue, but kind of uh, lilac. I can see where I could go very heavy handed with this shade because it is so pretty. Wow. This is really, really gorgeous. Oh my gosh. Okay, let me go off camera. I'm gonna go ahead and do my lashes and then pop in some eyeliner and I'll be right back. Okay, and I'm back. I went on ahead and put on mascara. Um, if you wanted to make this a bit more of a dramatic look, you could go ahead and put those false eyelashes on. But overall, I am so happy with this look. I think it looks really great. Um, I don't have the most experience with eyeshadows. I'm at a very beginner level, but I feel like these shades are perfect for not just the beginner eyeshadow user, but even the beginner 
like brighter shade user. A little really does go a long way. So if you're a more, like I said, beginner user, you just tap in lightly into those pans and kind of place your color and work from there. It's a lot easier to add more, but this is really nice. And I just used a simple technique. Um, I didn't do anything crazy. I didn't go for that halo eye. Although I kind of wish I did now knowing how beautiful Nova is. I, I don't know if it's just my lighting or just cameras in general, but in the reviews that I've watched and even in Angie's video, I don't think that those videos really do the justice uh, or the justice of how pretty these colors are. The way that it looks over those matte shades is so pretty. So on its own, it's just that beautiful like white blue lilac -y, you know, in the light, but once you really pop it over that blue, it's so pretty. That astro shade, I loved it when it was meeting up with the void. Um, void and Seven of Nine are just the best matte shades of blue that I've used. Um, I feel like I'm rambling. Let's go on to look number two. I really can't wait to get into the next shades. I think the next look I'm gonna go for is the red look. Um, so stay tuned. Okay, we're back for look number two. Um, today's look is going to be the beautiful red smoky eye that she does. Um, this was the look that really sold me on this palette. Uh, I mean, I was already in love with the idea that, you know, one of my favorite influencers was doing a collaboration with one of my favorite makeup brands, but this look, you'll see. So we're gonna go ahead and get started. I'm gonna do exactly like what I did in the last look by mapping out the shape of my eye. Um, but today's look is going to be a bit more dramatic. Um, we're gonna go in with that shade Red Giant. And just like that void shade, you don't have to go in very super heavy handed because it is a very pigmented shade. And so I'm just gonna st stamp kind of where I want this to go. And just like Void, it's very easy to use, but wherever you place it, that's where it's gonna be. So it's easier to go in light and add more than to just go in, unless you're confident in where that red's gonna go. I don't wanna take it too far into my crease just yet. I just want to stamp it into place. But this is a very, very pretty shade. Are my eyes looking the same direction? Um, oh yeah, see, once I start to take it over this way, there we go. Perfect. All right, next I'm gonna take the shade Samus. Here, let's use this brush. This is the more peachy shade, and I love the name. And I'm just gonna soften the edges. This might not be the right brush to use for this. We'll see, we'll play with it. And just like yesterday's look with the two mattes, these two play really well together as well. As well, so many wells. Um, 
See, my eyes are doing that thing where one of them is looking great and the other is struggling a bit, but that's okay. That's on me, not on the shadows. Uh, here, let's see if I can't take a fluffier brush and go in. And just like yesterday, I would encourage you to go back and forth between those matte shades just to really build it up and get the color that you want. Because these shades are very pigmented, but they build up really nicely. So let's go ahead and take that same brush I used for Red Giant. And let's just go ahead and press that in. To make sure that that outer corner really pops. And the more that I work it, I can see where I need it to go and how to place it. And it softens so nicely. I know I said this a lot last time, but these are very, very user friendly. Because my advice would be, if you're beginning, to just go in very light handedly. A little really does go a long way. All right, I could be blending for forever. Okay, now that we have the red and peachy shade kind of set and blended in. This was the selling point for me that I knew that this palette was something special because I'm gonna take the shade Cylon and it's this beautiful purple shade and I'm just gonna tap it into the corner of that red giant. Now I'm not gonna blend it all the way across, I'm just gonna try and keep it in that corner But once I saw Angie do this, I was sold. It's so pretty. Oh, it looks kind of... On camera, it looks kind of funny. Let me finish blending. Okay, let me finish up the look, and then I'll come back with my final thoughts. This is the final look, and I am just so happy with how this came out. Um, I've tried a lot of red and purple shades from all kinds of different palettes and different brands. And these have been the easier ones to work with, especially in terms of uh, placement, laying them down and blending them out. Some shades, you know, once you stamp it in, it's really hard to soften them out, but these were relatively easy. They look very intimidating in the pan. Um, but like I said, if you go in with a light hand and it's very easy to work with, no matter what your skill level is. What I really enjoy is that this peach shade, the Samus, really is still prominent and you can still really see it, but the way that Nebula lays over it just really brings it to another level. Um, I know that I said that the uh, Cylon on the Red Giant was really the selling point because I loved that color combo and when i saw angie do it her look was so beautiful but i'm really loving these lighter shades this i wouldn't say this is an everyday look um but this is definitely the kind of eyeshadow look that i like to go for same with angie i kind of like uh, a more dramatic outer lid just because i like how it makes my eye look um and to just soften it on the inside. Now, because my eyes are a little hooded, I can't bring the darker shades in too far or use or be too heavy with them because it will make my whole lid just look dark and then I'll lose those lighter shades. But uh, just to bring it in close, you can really see just that peach shade and it feathers in so nicely. It almost just looks like a color pencil on my eye. Um, I really enjoy this. I really like this. Uh, yesterday's look felt like a look 
for, you know, going to an event or going to something special where I needed to be more dolled up, where this feels more like not an everyday look, like I said, but this feels comfortable to me. This feels like my, my zone. Um, I did just put on mascara. You can make it more drama with the falsies. But like I said, I really just wanted to show just how prominent that peachy tone is because it's so pretty and I really don't want to cover it up. I did take a more plummy shade in the uh, waterline. Um, and it's the ColourPop. Um, my... The name's been rubbed off. Great. Uh, it's the one from like the Butterfly Collection. I think it's like a permanent... Uh, gel liner now. It's just the one in the tube. Um, but I think that purple, like a purple tone with that red and purple combo in the inner corner is just so nice. Um, so let's go ahead and move on to the third look and I'll give you my final thoughts on the palette. Okay, and now we're on to our final look. This look comes from Angie's, uh, I believe it was a Get Ready With Me. It's gonna be focused more on the purple shades of the palette, um, but we're gonna start with this Naru shade. It's more of like a taupey gray-esque kind of color, and I'm gonna blend that in with Rock Hopper. But I'm just taking it to the corner right here and blending it out. I don't wanna take it all the way to the inside um, because I want to keep that area open for uh, the brighter tone that we're going to be using over there. And we just have to stamp it in. It's a very nice neutral shade. Like you could almost just wear this shade and maybe one of the metallics or duochromes. And I love the way that it's complementing my, um, the creases, crevices of my eyelids right here. Just very little effort to make it pop open. And I don't want to take it too far. I suffer from doing too much. Let me take a stiffer brush so I can map out where exactly I want that to go. And just stamp it in. I was able to do this eye just fine. From doing this video, I've learned that this eye is my better eye. In terms of application, I always go really heavy on my right side. Okay, now let's take that rock hopper shade. Oh, this is so nice. So they kind of just blend in really well together. This might not be the right brush to do this with. Oh. But it looks really nice. And look, I'm just using these like slight little stamping motions and that color is going on so well. See, this eye looks fine. I brought it up a little too high right here. It looks more purple on camera. Here, let me take a not used brush. And just kind of sweep it away. Oh. I love how soft these tones are. I don't really have other shades of my collection that give me the same kind of, I don't know if muted is the right word to describe these colors. There, because if I take it any further, it's gonna go on my inner lid. Um, okay, and then I'm gonna take 
You're my only hope. And just like all the other looks before, we're just gonna press that in. Wow. This is such a pretty shade. I really, really enjoy this shade. I know I've said that about all the metallics in this palette, but it's really good. It's like um, my favorite kind of more shimmery metallic shades are from the Norvina palette. And those have been like my favorite shimmer shades, if you will, um, that I've ever had or ever played with. But I think she might be beat because these are so pretty. Wow. And it's this beautiful, like, white, lilac kind of tone. I just want to make it even. Um, uh, I'm going to take a little bit of raw copper on a smaller brush and then just kind of marry the two together. Okay, and then Angie showed me this really pretty, well, not me personally, uh, but she showed us in the video this really pretty technique that she does, um, which I thought was just like an overall like highlight of the palette because you can really change how these shades look. So I'm just gonna stamp that Cylon underneath. My eyelashes are so long that it's rubbing on the brush. And that's what all that fallout is. That's not so much the product as it is biology and user error. We're gonna take my favorite shade, Nova. There we go. I knew I was doing something right. And then on the other side, I don't know if you can see it in the light, but the way that that Nova on that Cylon makes that purple really pop. I wish I had the skills that Angie had because the way she did it was so pretty. But we're learning here, so it's fine. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and finish this look with uh, some mascara and some eyeliner and I'll be back. And this is the final look. I just went ahead and took a black liquid liner um, and I took that plum shade right in the waterline and I think it looks great. I love that it's this neutral with this little pop of purple in there. Um, I think this looks really, really nice. And as someone who is a beginner to eyeshadow looks, I like any eyeshadow that I can use and it might not come out perfectly, but it still looks really good like this is I wouldn't be surprised if I wore this on the daily let's go on ahead and get our final thoughts on the palette before I get into my final thoughts and opinions of the palette I do just want to say that in no way am I affiliated or sponsored by Kleidos or Angie to make this video um, as much as I love Angie I wouldn't let somebody else that I don't even know um, influence my own thoughts and opinions on a product. Um, just wanted to put that out there before I continue. But I really, really love this Club Nebula palette. Uh, I think it's wonderful. It was my first experience with pre-ordering a palette or a makeup item as soon as it dropped. Um, I've always been kind of passive with makeup in that if it's something that I was really interested in and I was able to get my hands on it, it was meant to be. And if I didn't, then it wasn't. And you know, I didn't really lose any sleep over it. Um, but when Angie had announced that she was coming out with this product uh, or with this palette, it really made me excited because I had never, again, 
purchased an item at pre-order, but at that point I had already loved the Kleidos brand and the products um, that I had received. I don't want to say received because they didn't send them to me. I bought them myself. Um, I've been using Kleidos products since they had their mink eyelashes. They don't even have them on their site anymore. It's been a discontinued item. I've seen a lot of different things come and go like that highlighter set. I'm really sad I didn't get my hands on that one, but this isn't the video. This video is about the Club Nebula palette. And I think for whatever skill grade you are at, this is perfect for you. I'm a very beginner skill set. My own makeup journey comes from cosplay. I know how to contour my face to look like not my face. Um, I know how to make my eyes really big and doll-like, but I never really played with colored eyeshadow to really figure out what my own personal aesthetic was. Um, and with the Kleidos palettes, those were my first introduction to a more colorful palette. Uh, and I believe it was because of the Kleidos palette that I was interested in my Norvina palette, which is my all-time favorite palette. So that's just some history on my end. Um, what I really love about this palette is that when you look at it, it's very easy to put your color look together. It spells itself out for you. You can definitely see that Seven of Nine and Void are definitely going to be colors that you want to play with um, and blend together. But then this uh, Red Giant and the Cylon shade, when Angie put those two colors together, it kind of just... I feel like I was woken up to how eyeshadow really works. Um, they play like, like I said before when doing the look, they play like color pencils. You can go in really light and blend them together and work the colors to get something really awesome. And they have these shimmer shades that are multi-use. I shouldn't say shimmer shades because that's not what they are. They're a metallic shade. Excuse me. Um, cause some of them are duochrome, some of them are multi-chrome, but they can be worn alone. They can be worn over shades. They can marry a look together and you can even use them if you're bold enough as a highlighter. I think this is a very well-rounded product and I'm so happy I have it in my collection. Now, if you're watching this video, I believe when it goes live, the uh, restock should be live. And I'm not anyone special in the makeup community. I'm not even anyone special in the YouTube community. Um, so if you're watching my video uh, looking for reasons to buy this palette and you haven't already come up for them yourself, I don't know what to tell you other than go buy that palette. Um, the Club Nebula palette is something that I'm really, really happy to have in my collection and I think it's really wonderful. I, I just love it all the way around um, and if you're interested in a more colorful look, if you're interested in just, you know, having really fun with your makeup that isn't just, you know, the standard YouTube cut and paste look and you kind of want to have more identity in your look, I think this is a perfect palette to have. And I just want to give a special thank you to Angie for helping me with this video. Um, she didn't edit it or anything like that. Uh, I had just emailed her and asked her for a photo of her backdrop because I wanted to make my own version of the three looks video that she did. Um, it was when she filmed her get ready with me, uh, talking about what she learned in 2020, that even inspired me to do this video. I was just gonna buy this palette and have this palette for myself. Um, if you've seen anything on my YouTube channel, uh, I don't even have any kind of makeup, any, like, I just don't have it. Um, nor was I really too interested in making that kind of content because I'm, I'm a beginner set, like, what, Everyone knows how to do a winged eyeliner by now. What am I adding to the table? Um, and I just really appreciate that video uh, so much. And that's why I really wanted to do this particular look and end it with this particular look. 
um, because she said she wanted to work on her audio and I've been saying, you know, I want to figure out what kind of content I want to make. Uh, that's kind of been the theme of all my videos and I'm someone that can't figure that out until I just start doing it. Um, so I've made a small little list of homework assignments for myself and I, you know, know that I wanted to use my green screen. I just didn't have an idea of a video that I could do that with. And I'm so happy that Angie was able to help me out by giving me the photo of this backdrop. Um, because we live in two different countries and I don't know her personally. I'm not in her house in any way, but I just thought this would be fun. And this is kind of my love letter to Angie anyway, because I love her content so much. Um, so Angie, if you're watching, thank you for helping me out. And you know, your palette is so lovely and I'm so happy to have it that um, I really can't see or I can't wait for whatever else that you do. And I'm just really, really thankful, you know, to be able to find the kind of makeup community where it's uh, what I want out of a makeup community and not so much uh, just here's a new product and buy it. And like, you know, cause that's not what I'm into and that's not what you're into, um, which is really great. So I think we mesh really well in that aspect. Um, and I just, I love the palette. Angie, I think you're great. And um, if you've watched this far along, thank you. Please go get the Club Nebula palette. I think it's really, really amazing. Um, and that's all I have to say. I'm gonna get off my soapbox. I'm, I'm done. This video is probably gonna be like 40 minutes long. Um, again, thank you for staying the entire way and watching and uh, I hope that you also post your looks with this palette because I love that Angie's been resharing them. I love that Kleidos has been resharing them um, because there's just a lot you can do with this palette. But okay, enough, I'm done. Um, thank you, tune in next time. Uh, who knows what I'm gonna be doing, who else I'm gonna be impersonating or cosplaying, whatever you wanna call it. Um, thank you so much.